Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to discuss a story with you from a supplementary reader for class 10. The name of the story is The Necklace and the name of the writer is Gaidi Mopasa. Henry Ron Albert Gaidi Mopasa was a French author whose unassuming and simple style of writing contained deep insights into the lives and follies of people. His short stories focused on life in the aftermath of the French Prussian War in the 1870s and the tragedies that played out in people's lives. Considered one of the best short story writers of all time, he was a master of the twist and ironic plot endings. Many of his works such as The Necklace have been adapted to films and theatrical performances. His work has also been widely translated and continues to be celebrated for the economy of his writing and his unsparing observation of personal conflict. In his lifetime, he wrote no less than 300 short stories, six novels, three book length travelogues and a volume of poetry. The central protagonist, Mathilde Loisel. In the original story, we are introduced to the protagonist and her name is Mathilde Loisel. But since the story has been translated from French to English, there the name is Matilda Loisel. Mathilde Loisel has a tragic flaw, dissatisfaction. Her discontentment ushers in a series of unfortunate events. So let us first discuss the story and then we will discuss a few things related to the story, a few questions, right? The story begins with us being introduced to Matilda Loisel. She is described as a pretty and charming girl who feels sorry about the fact that she has been born into a family of unfavorable economic status. So that means not a very rich family, but educated family, but still she was dissatisfied. Thereafter, when she grew up, she was married off to a clerk in the Ministry of Education, who could afford to provide her only with a modest lifestyle, even though she was not uncomfortable, she was profusely dissatisfied. She wanted all kinds of richness. Matilda could not bear the fact that she is not from an affluent background. She feels the burden of her poverty intensely. She regrets her lot in life and spends endless hours imagining a more rich and spendthrift lifestyle. While her husband expresses his pleasure at the small modest supper she has prepared for him, she dreams of an elaborate feast served in fancy china and eaten in the company of wealthy friends. So are you observing something that her husband is trying his best to make her feel comfortable? He praises her cooking, he tries to do everything for her, but she is always dissatisfied. She wants to be very, very rich and she wants to be in the company of rich people. She wants to spend money. The only thing she longs for are fancy, expensive jewels and dresses. That's her idea. Simplicity has no meaning in her life. Without these, she feels she is not desirable. She is always unhappy. What kind of a person is Mademoiselle Loisel and why is she always unhappy? You can open your books on page 39. You can read the story on your own. And then uh, maybe we can discuss. Mademoiselle Loisel is a young and pretty but discontented woman. She is of a humble background but dreams of 
riches and comforts. She is proud of her beauty and wants to be admired. Her meager resources are not enough to satisfy her expensive cravings and that makes her angry all the time. Therefore, she cannot even accept the appreciation of her husband and which is not a good thing at all. And what kind of a person is her husband? You must have gathered some idea. Her husband, Monsieur Loisel, is a simple and ordinary young man, a clerk by profession, but he is content with his job. Also, he is a caring man and he tries to humor his wife and help her in her social ambitions. He is especially excited to show the dinner invitation to his wife. They are two different personalities altogether. There is a stark contrast between the two. Matilda is outwardly beautiful, but from within she is discontented and is always yearning for material things. Matilda is greedy, while her husband is kind and generous. She believes that material wealth will bring her joy and her pride prevents her from admitting to Madame Frostier that she is not rich. She has a friend, but she always pretends in front of Madame Frostier that she is very rich and she has lost the necklace she borrowed. We will continue with the story. Is because of her pride and obsession with wealth, Matilda loses 10 years of her life and spends all her savings on replacing the fake necklace. So, let us continue with the story now. These are some of the observations that I have shared with you. One night her husband returns home proudly bearing an invitation to a formal party hosted by the Ministry of Education. Matilda was looking forward to all these things. She always yearned for all these things. He hoped that Matilda would be thrilled with the chance to attend an event of this sort, but she gets angry and begins to cry. Instead of being grateful, instead of being happy, she starts crying. What could be the reason of her outburst? The reason that she tells her husband is, that she has nothing nice to wear and he can give the invitation to one of his friends whose wife can afford nice dresses. Her husband is obviously upset by her reaction and asks how much a suitable dress would cost. He really wants to help her. She thinks about it carefully and tells him that 400 francs would be enough, which is a lot of money. Her husband had saved that money for himself because he wanted to buy a gun and he also wanted to go out with his friends. Now this money is given to Matilda and Matilda buys the dress but is still unhappy because she has no jewelry to wear along with it. She dismisses Loisel's idea of wearing fresh flowers. He gives her the idea, why can't you wear fresh flowers? They would look beautiful, but she does not like the idea. But when he suggests she borrow some jewelry from her friend, Madame Jean Frostier, she is very happy to borrow a diamond necklace. Madame Loisel enjoys herself at the ball dancing with influential men and reveling in their admiration. That is what she was longing for all the while. She was very happy. Once she and Loisel return home, she discovers that she has lost the necklace. It is no longer there. She must have dropped it somewhere. Unable to find it or anyone who knows where it might have gone, they resign themselves to buying a replacement. They cannot do anything else but to buy a new one and replace it. 
at the Palais Royal shops, they find a similar necklace priced at 40,000 francs, which is a huge amount. And they bargain for it eventually, settling at 36,000 francs. Loisel uses an inheritance from his father to cover half of the cost and borrows the rest at high interest. So that is how her husband tries to help her. First, the money that he had saved for himself, he gives it to Matilda to buy a dress. Now whatever he had inherited from his father, he uses that money to buy the necklace and then he takes on money on interest, high interest. Madame Loisel gives the necklace to Jean without mentioning the loss of the original. And Jean does not notice the difference. Now Mr. Loisel and Madame Loisel live in poverty for 10 years. With him taking on night work as a copier to earn extra money and her sacrificing her beauty to do household chores on her own. Earlier she had a help to help her in cleaning the house, washing the clothes, but now she could not afford anyone. No help was available. She had to do the household chores on her own while constantly bargaining with the clerks and vegetable sellers. They gave up their servant and moved to a poor apartment up many stairs. There was no socialization, there were no outings. After all, the loans were paid off. Madame Loisel encounters Jean on the Chouans Elysees, but Jean barely recognizes her due to her shabby clothing and unkempt appearance. Jean is also accompanied by her young daughter of which little mention is made except by inference as the Loisels have no children. Madame Loisel tells Jean about the loss and replacement of the necklace and of the hard times she has endured on Jean's account. So she was complaining to her that because she had lost the necklace she had to really work hard for 10 years with no help, with nobody to look after. Therefore, she has lost on everything. She blames her former friend for the past miserable 10 years. Jeanne reveals that the necklace she lent to Madame Loisel had fake diamonds and was worth no more than 500 francs. I hope you have understood the plot, the storyline. Mopasa, like his mentor Flaubert, believed that fiction should convey reality with as much accuracy as possible. He strove for objectivity rather than psychological exploration or romantic descriptions. When you read the story on your own, you will find that you know there are no descriptions, there is no psychological exploration, but very objectively he is just narrating the story, the incidents. Preferring to structure his stories and novels around clearly defined plot lines and specific observable details. However, he also argued that calling fiction realistic was not correct. Every work of fiction he believed was an illusion, a world created by a writer to convey a particular effect to readers. He was faithful to the facts above all and believed that close focused observation could reveal new depths and perspectives to even the most common unremarkable aspects of life. And this story, the necklace, clearly demonstrates Mopasa's obsession with facts and observations. When you read the story on your own, 
you underline where are the facts and what are his observations. Because this act will help you read other texts also with full comprehension. So, this is a task that I am giving you. You have to read the story on your own and when you are reading the story, you must underline the facts and observations and then analyze the story. Mopasa simply tells us about her unhappiness and all the things she desires. While when you are reading the story, note down why is she unhappy and what are the things that she desires for. Make a list of it and when you are making a list of it, you will comprehend the story better. At the end of the story, he provides no moral commentary or explanation about Matilda's reaction to Madame Prostia's shocking revelation. He is not giving any moral lecture over here that one should not borrow things and if at all you borrow, you must keep it with great care. I mean he does not give any moral lecture. He leaves it to the reader to understand this thing on their own. He leaves it to the audience to understand and apply in their lives. He simply reports events as they happen. There is no pretense, no idealizing or artifice to Mopasa's prose or treatment of his characters. So now over here, I leave it to you to interpret the ending on your own. Now you analyze it, whether you can say Matilda was right or she was wrong, now it is your analysis, how you look at it, it is your perspective. Please write it down, you can share it with your friends, with your teacher, you can also share it with us, we will get back to you. Now I have a few questions to discuss with you. Now the question is what fresh problem now disturbs Madame Loasil? What is the fresh problem? We have discussed the story. Earlier the problem was she did not have a good dress, she did not have a necklace, but now what is the problem? After spending a fortune on a beautiful dress, Mademoiselle Loasel is faced with yet another disaster. She frets over the fact that she does not have a beautiful jewel to go with her dress. So she asks her husband to pass on the invitation to someone else. So how is the problem solved? Matilda Loasel's husband, Monsieur Loasel, comes to her rescue. First he suggests that she wear fresh flowers. Matilda outrightly mocks the idea. Then he advises that she borrow some jewels from her rich friend, Mademoiselle Forestier. The problem is solved when Mademoiselle Forestier lends Matilda a beautiful diamond necklace. And as you all know that the necklace is misplaced, Matilda ends up losing that. How do they replace the necklace? After all efforts fail, the Loasils decide to buy a new identical necklace to replace the lost one. Monsieur Loasel pulled in 18,000 francs of his inheritance and borrowed the rest at high interest. Then the couple managed to buy the new necklace for 36,000 francs and returned it to the rightful owner. The course of Loisel's life changed due to the necklace. Comment on this. I want you to write the answer or at least note down the points. Their life changes after that. What are some of the changes? I am giving you 30 seconds to at least note down the points and then we will discuss.
I am sure you must have noted down the points, the relevant points. It takes the Loasals a decade, 10 years to pay back the money they borrowed to buy the necklace and it changed everything for them. They had to move to the poorest quarters of the city with no maids or assistants. Matilda had to cook, clean, mend, sew, bargain with the grocer and butcher to save every bit of money just for mere survival. Her husband had to work in the evening and night as well to pay their debt. In this way, the course of the Luasil's life changed due to the necklace. How unfortunate. My next question is, what was the cause of Matilda's ruin? How could she have avoided it? Don't you think she was ruined? Because she was greedy, because she was not happy with her status. She wanted to present herself as something else, which she was not actually. Matilda's pride and her materialistic aspirations coupled with her dishonesty paved the way for her ruin. She could have avoided it by learning to accept her current situation and being content with what she had. So what lesson do we learn over here? We learn the lesson that we should work hard and we should be satisfied with what we have. My next question is, what would have happened to Matilda if she had confessed to her friend that she had lost her necklace? What do you think would have happened? Maybe that would have saved her 10 years of poverty, 10 years of hard work. So we can say that truth and honesty would have saved Matilda from her doom. If only she had been courageous enough to confess to her friend the truth of the necklace. She would have come to know that it was a fake one that cost a mere 500 francs. She would not have spent her husband's entire inheritance and borrowed 18,000 francs to pay for its replacement. How unfortunate. In fact, she would have saved herself and her husband from 10 long years of crushing poverty, misery and backbreaking labor. So what do we learn over here? We should be truthful. We should be honest. And you know, if we look back, we, we are dishonest on petty things. I think you agree with me. We start telling lies over petty issues. We mustn't do that because if that becomes a habit, it can, we can, you know, be in trouble because of this. My next question is, if you were caught in a situation like this, how would you have dealt with it? Such situations do come in life. You have borrowed a book from your friend and you have lost it. And you tell your friend, I returned it on that day or I will give you after 10 days. You can be honest and truthful that I have lost it. And how can you compensate? You can always discuss with your friend. While it is true that each of us has their way of seeing things and solving problems. I would suggest that uh, false pride and false aspirations need to be kept aside. Facing the situation by speaking the truth and facing the consequences is better, always better. Self-respect and honesty go a long way. It is not wrong to aspire for better things in life. But what is truly available should be cherished. Also, if we have gratitude for what we already have, we are more likely to succeed than what we are insecure for. So it's a great lesson for all of us. We should be truthful and we should be honest and we should be ready to face the consequences. Hmm? Okay, let us discuss this question. The characters in this story speak in English. 
Yes, of course, they do speak in English. Do you think this is their language? You already know that this story has been translated from French to English. So, what clues are there in the story about the language its characters must be speaking in, the original? Yeah, the characters speak in English, but it is not their language. Mopasa wrote the story in French and it was translated into English. There are many words in French to prove it. First, the very names of the characters like Mademoiselle, Monsieur, Matilda, Loisel. and the minister's name, George Rampano, indicate their French origin. Then the words for currency, like franc, show the same. Also the shop's location at Palais Royal and Champs-Élysées point out the French history of the characters and the story. Now we come to the writing part. Write an alternate ending to the story we have discussed. You can change the ending. Mademoiselle Loisel has just lost the necklace and on her husband's advice, she decides to tell her friend the truth. For once, Monsieur Loisel does not let his wife fret and misguide him. He takes charge of the situation. What happens next? So you continue from here, give it a new ending. You can give the characters dialogues and complete the story in as many lines as Mopasa had written. So that is one task. The second writing task is write a letter to your grandparents or a diary entry narrating any incident from your life or the lives of those around you that has left an impact on you. You observe people around you, you observe your family members around you. Some incident could have really left an impact on you. Did it inspire you or caution you about what decisions to avoid? Did it change your personal life goals and dreams? So keeping this in view, you have to either write a letter or a diary entry. I have a project work also for you. Think back and reflect on all the short stories that you have read or heard till date. These could be from your school textbooks or library or your family gatherings. Note any five that you think are similar to the necklace. In their use of simple writing, ironic plots, and insightful commentary on human follies. These things you have to keep in mind. I repeat, ironic plots, simple writing, and insightful commentary on human follies. Ask a friend or classmate to do the same and exchange the reading list and revisit Read those stories. In this way, you will be able to appreciate writing styles, character sketches, and above all, the lessons that others' choices, even if from the world of imagination, can teach us. I would like to leave you with a thought. Dream big, but remember, it is small, well thought out steps that take you farthest. Happy reading. Thank you.